A lot of fallout from the Royal Rumble. The Raw show tonight included a bunch of matches to determine who will be in the Elimination Chamber for the WWE title match coming up in about three weeks now. And it will be Lashley defending the title in the Chamber against Seth Rollins, Austin Theory, Riddle, AJ Styles, and Brock Lesnar in the Chamber. And Becky Lynch will be facing Lita... For the Raw Women's title. I'm making that up. And Ronda Rousey announced that she will choose her challenger on SmackDown this coming Friday night. So those were the big stories coming out of Raw. And Dave, what do you make of this so far? Well, there's actually a lot of stuff going on there. Um, I don't know how much you've been following, but the very interesting fallout. And I don't know all of um, the repercussions, but um, Shane McMahon was going to be in the chamber and set up a feud with Seth Rollins for WrestleMania. So um, I don't know if that was going to be the championship match, but it's obviously, whether it is or it isn't, um, that was that was changed. So I don't know how that relates to Shane McMahon at WrestleMania, but um, this was supposed to be the step to that. And I guess, you know, Seth Rollins was originally in the Rumble, which was another story. There's a, you know, I don't know if you've heard, but like, both rumbles were changed over and over and over again. Um, in fact, the Seth match with Roman was changed several times too. Um, essentially, the original finish was Roman Reigns was going to beat Seth Rollins, and I don't know what was going to happen from there. But the whole show, the basic gist of the Rumble show was that Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins is—I mean, Roman Reigns and. Um, Brock Lesnar is the big match of the year, and everything at the Rumble was to accentuate that as the big match of the year. So, you know, both had to look really, really strong. And So the, why so, didn't Roman beat Seth Rollins? Because Vince changed the finish, because when the decision was made to do all those chair shots at the end, uh, Vince thought that was too much to do to Seth Rollins, to destroy him like that which also led to the idea uh, Shane was really pushing for Rollins in the Rumble. But when you did that beatdown, um, the feeling was it would be really stupid for him to like take that terrible beating and then go into the Rumble. So, so why did they do the chair shots? Why didn't Roman just beat him and not do the chair shots? Because he didn't the feeling, sell the chair shots for one second tonight. I know. Isn't that crazy? The feeling was just the chair shots were more devastating than the win, so they did. The, they went for the chair shots. It was shots. so devastating. The guy came out tonight laughing and joking around and, and not bothered at all. I know. I know. He didn't sell it tonight, but that was the idea. They um, So because of that, um, also, I think that also, I think that if Seth had gone to the Rumble, I think it would have weakened the Brock storyline, you know, in the sense that, it you know, one guy in the championship match is already in the Rumble, so Brock coming out, you know, as a, it, it's not as big a deal. Like, I wouldn't have, if it was up to me, I wouldn't have put them both in, even no matter what happened with Seth. I would have just said, like, you don't want to put both those guys in, so just go with the one that's more important, which is Brock, since he's going to win. So that was the, the gist of the storyline. I don't know what's going on with Randy Orton, because if you remember, last week, the big thing of the scooter race was about how Otis and Randy Orton were also going to have a scooter race. And Randy Orton was not even at the show, and he wasn't put in the um, chamber match either. So that's another question. I don't know the answer to that one. But um, so so essentially, you know, that's... Well, I, I don't you know, know if there would be a story, but I mean, my guess would be that, uh, I mean, this whole multi-week storyline with uh, the scooter race and everything... I mean, the story is it's supposed to build to a tag title rematch. So the Chamber's only three weeks away. There's another uh, academic challenge next week. So my presumption would be that he's going to be wrestling for the tag team titles at Elimination Chamber. No, because Matt Riddle is in the Chamber. I guess you're right. Yep, yep, yep. So they couldn't do both? I mean, I, I mean, you could. I don't think they would. I don't know. Yeah. The, um, but I thought it was really weird, you know, Orton not being on TV. 
Um, and also the other thing was he was only in the rumble for a couple minutes too. And in St. Louis, like I was questioning that, I go like, why would Orton, who's going to get the biggest pop of anyone on the show, except for the surprise pop for Ronda, why would he not? Cause, cause St. Louis is his hometown and he had done all the media work and everything like that. Not all the media work, but he'd done a lot of media work. And, you know, I mean, like in a match that didn't have a lot of heat, the crowd would have been, would have gone crazy for everything that. Randy Orton did from the moment he arrived, but he arrived late. He was out quick. And so I thought that was a really weird booking, you know, um, but I don't know that the situation is for that, but um, yeah, Orton not being on the show. No, they, they, they did the whole thing last week where Orton didn't want to be in a scooter race. The whole, they kept going over and over again about how, oh my God, Otis in a scooter race. And then all of a sudden that's completely dropped. And that was like one of the big things that they pushed last week. So, so these are just all new, all new changes. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of others, so there you go. But there's, um, there was a lot of heat on Shane, um, because Shane was one of the producers. In fact, he was kind of the head producer of the Rumble, and then he had an idea of what the Rumble was going to be, and then a lot of that ended up being changed. And, um, I don't know all of everything, but I do know there was a, several people who kind of made offhanded remarks to me about Shane, and, you know, just kind of, what was going on there and everything. And um, he has helped book the rumble in the past. He, he's not, you know, people are going like, is he, is he backstage? Is he doing any like front office work? And the answer is no, he's not. But for whatever reason, you know, Vince has allowed him to help do the rumble the last couple of years, but it was him and many other people. And in this one, it was as well, but he really took charge and, um rubbed some people the wrong way evidently because you know it was kind of like that so the um the ending um you know obviously the the deal basically with rumble was that you know brock was to murder everybody and that was that and and that was probably brock's call because it was kind of said to me like um brock you know um brock was going to get exactly what he wanted and that was to get himself as strong as possible for the Roman Reigns match. But the idea was to give Drew, like everybody was supposed to just get murdered in the, by, by him. And they all did. But they were going to do stuff with Drew. They did want to protect Drew, but they were running low on time, as you could tell. They had a rush to get off the air and everything like that. So they didn't do as much, but Brock Dude, did. Dude, this rushing to as- go off the air was just like baffling to me because... They started this rumble at 10 minutes after the top of the hour. And if they went 45 minutes with 90-second intervals, they would have literally five minutes left after Brock Lesnar came out. And, I mean, knowing that going in, this is not hindsight. It's like you could look at the clock. I mean, this is a company that many times they fudged the time, and they could have fudged 10 seconds off every single one of those intervals, and they would have had three extra minutes or he could shave 15 seconds off or whatever and not had to rush but instead they didn't and then they were scrambling at the end yeah well one of the things though when it comes to the intervals is is that you know like they 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 don't you of course of course they they don't do legitimate times they do it whenever they they do it but there's a point in all these things where you know like they the clock goes when the match when the when that segment gets to a certain point so yeah they don't have the you know and evidently there were so many things in this rumble bobby rude came out dolph ziggler came out i mean there was nothing being done where they couldn't have shaved time off the intervals after the guys like that came in there were there were like 17 or 18 of those guys where nothing happened maybe more yeah but they were waiting for their their spot you know because this you know they're waiting for the spot to get the new entrant and so that's not always perfectly timed. You know, they don't like want to do it on when you're doing it like on top of like if somebody's in the middle of a high spot and then you call the number, you want everything to be settled down when you um you know do the the countdown because the minute you do the countdown, nobody's paying attention to the match. They're all looking to the back. So you don't want to be you know doing that putting that countdown on the screen when there's something going on. So that's you know one of the one of the issues with um you know, like when you put that thing on the screen, if you're doing like legitimate and you didn't worry about like, you know, stepping on somebody, 
you could do that. I mean, you could. Well, There's sure, no, sure. And there have been many instances they, in rumbles where that has happened. But, I mean, this particular rumble, I mean, this was a largely boring rumble for 70% of well, it. Well, I mean, it, it was. guys and they're doing things. There's nothing, there's no well, stepping on anybody because nobody was doing anything. Well, it was it was largely boring, but it's not like you go in there and, and, and when you're in the in the meeting and you're putting this thing together, you know, these agents that are putting it together, and they're going like, well, you know, this is good. We're going to put together a really boring rumble. They didn't think it was going to be a boring rumble. I don't think they really understood that the audience recognized that none of these people were going to win because they all knew that there's only like three or four people who had a shot at winning and almost none of them were up. Well, none of them were early. I mean, I think that they thought that people might get behind AJ and think AJ could win and be you know, interested in him, but I don't think they, they weren't. Um, so yeah, that was the problem is that the people were, you know, it wasn't like, we know, God, this thing's going to be so boring, so we can just rush through it. Well, no, the but you also have to be a special kind of clueless in 2022 to think that the fans are going to expect that anybody except three of these people are going to win. Well, they that's they didn't book, you know, they booked the match with the idea that people were going to stay interested, and uh, yeah, they really weren't until you know until Brock came out. You know, at the very end, I think McIntyre was another one who they probably because McIntyre was in for a long time. I think they thought that he could be a you know, it's like there's certain guys and they're like the bridge and you kind of are looking at them as being stars. And the reality was, is that I think that I think, you know, what, what one of the issues was is that I think that when Brock lost. So many people figured out that Brock was winning the Rumble before he even came out. So it kind of was like. Well, let's wait for Brock to come out, and then he comes out, you know, number thirty. So that's like, you know, um, you know, just one of those things. And also, I think that the one of the other things was is that they didn't do, you know, the the legend surprises, which the people really want, and but you know, and those pop the people, and they didn't do that because for whatever reason they just decided not to do it maybe there was nobody to do it where they did maybe they thought they they were doing so many with the women they didn't do, need to do any with the men probably the best thing which would have been honestly is to um you know cut the women's surprises or or re, you know people from the past from the women down to about three or four and add two or three to the guys or something but but they didn't do that either so so that's what you ended up with hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.